Welcome to Discovery Watch with John Kaiser. I'm Jim Goddard. John, three weeks ago, four of our Discovery Watch juniors presented in your session at the Metals Investors Forum in Vancouver. In your talk, you argued that the market is losing interest in betting on higher metal prices to look to deliver stock price gains for companies with advanced projects that are marginal at current metal prices. Instead, you think investors should pay attention to earlier stage companies with exploration projects that could deliver 10 bagger gains from new discoveries. You declared one of the companies, Camino Minerals, as having made a major discovery that is now at the delineation stage. Has Camino resumed drilling at Los Chapitos? Uh, Camino Minerals uh, has indeed resumed drilling with a core rig, a 3,000-meter program on the 100% owned Los Chapitos uh, project. Uh, they will start by twinning hole number two, which was the discovery hole of uh, 106 meters of 1.3% copper. Uh, it ended in mineralization. Uh, that was a function of the limits of the RC drill rig. They will push that hole to a depth of about 400, 500 meters and also figure out, you know, how, how does, are they going to have any deviation issues and so on as they did with the RC rig. And then they'll proceed with the um, target that uh, uh, hole number four, which disappointed everybody because uh, it never got through the magnetite into the uh, iron oxide uh, copper gold mineralized style copper gold mineralization that uh, they hit in, in hole number two. And they've also decided to bring a second rig onto the project and start drilling at the caddy target, which is at the southeast end of the Adriana trend, also a mag target with an associated IP anomaly, uh, you know, also going to be blind with a leakage mineralization at surface. So this one, uh, uh, that one was the first one up in my, uh, uh, in my session at the Metals Investor Forum. Uh, the chart looks kind of uh, scary, uh, sitting there at 35 cents, and then it goes like almost straight up to $2 and back to dollar. It's now run up to dollar forty fifty on news that drilling has resumed. And, uh, you know, investors are sitting there on, uh, you know, five bagger already. Uh, if they can confirm that they have a high grade underground mineable copper deposit, uh, with a significant tonnage, uh, this stock could end up doing a lot better. They raised five million bucks at around, uh, uh, 95 cents, uh, earlier this month. Uh, so they're well financed to go ahead. Um, for those people, Discovery Watch fans, uh, who want to catch my session, I have now posted a blog at Kaiser Research, uh, online, which uh, has all the links for the YouTube version of my presentation, uh, Discovery Exploration Boom, as well as the uh, presentations done by these four companies in my session, uh, all of which I regard as Discovery Exploration type juniors. And I also did interviews interviews with the uh, presenters, uh, uh, which, which are also available. Plus, Gwen Preston and I have a chat about uh, what we think this market is all about. And she and I do think that the option, both think that the optionality trade has become a little lame and that uh, people are interested in discovery exploration type stories uh, where you're not at the mercy of whatever macro event is driving metal prices. It's all about have the companies generated good projects uh, with good targets and raise the money to test them to see if there's something there that works at the metal prices that we have today rather than we hope for sometime down the road. Mineral Mountain hopes to find another home state gold deposit at its Rosh Ford project in South Dakota. When will Mineral Mountain start drilling? Well, technically, uh, they can start drilling when they get a drill permit. Uh, I've just heard that the, uh, uh, the Department of Energy and Natural Resources has indicated that everything's uh, in order and that in two or three weeks they should have permits for drilling on the patented claims, which are the ones on which the standby target exists. The other claims are administered by the BLM. Those are both unpatented claims and physically staked claims. Uh, the BLM uh, is, is a diff, uh, because the patented claims are private property where the owner controls both the surface and subsurface rights, they have a, a much easier permitting regime than the other claims which uh, the subsurface rights are controlled by the government. And uh, they figure those ones, they, they will get them about uh, 
you know, mid-summer or so. Uh, once they uh, get the permits for the standby target, uh, they plan to mount a program of 10,000 meters, uh, 26 holes, uh, probably cost about $2 million U.S. Uh, now, when I said uh, technically they'll be able to drill uh, financially, they will need to raise more money. They only have about a $1 million right now. Uh, they have signed, con uh, uh, signed confidentiality agreements with about a half dozen producer types. I think about half of them have gone away when they realized that uh, uh, Mineral Mountain is not interested in a farm-out uh, deal. This is not a prospect generator farm-out strategy. This is uh, we generate the prospect and we go at it 100% and hope to deliver a project that somebody buys out uh, because we own the majority interest in it. So the other ones are probably in this category of these producers who are outsourcing their discovery exploration, taking uh, up to 19.9% uh, equity stakes in the companies with no rights on any of the company's projects, and basically getting that advantage over the competition Competition should the company uh, deliver a, a major discovery. Now, the stock's been a little weak in the past uh, uh, in the past three weeks, and uh, this is a bit of a headache because these producers, uh, uh, they don't mind doing a four to five million dollar financing, but they and and doing it at a premium to the market. Uh, but uh, they can only pay so and so much of a premium, and they can't go above nineteen point nine percent. And so the stock's sitting there at twenty two, twenty three cents. It's a bit of a problem for the company, and the problem is due to a deal they did several years ago with the Global Resource Investment Trust, which was this British outfit which uh, did these share swaps with a whole bunch of juniors, uh, where the juniors issued a lot of stock to this entity, and in exchange they got these units which were supposed to trade on London's AIM market, uh, and they would eventually sell that. Well, that all fell apart because the bear market continued way too long. That entity is now undergoing some sort of liquidation and there has been a seller that they believe is the Global Resource Investment Trust. Uh, uh, they figure maybe there's 3 million shares left that they own, and they are not very communicative. Normally in something like this, the company promoters will say, okay, how much do you want to sell at what price? And once we know that, we'll try and round up buyers to take this block off, off your hands. So far, this party has not done that. It's, it's just sort of a systematically selling the stock anytime there's any interest. Uh, um, it is an opportunity for sort of retail investors to uh, take advantage of, of a price that's basically forced selling. Um, but until that's out of the way, the stock will not really gain any traction on the upside. So getting a financing into the company so that they can start this program knowing that they can pay for it, uh, that is the key obstacle facing the start of drilling for uh, Mineral Mountain. Discovery Watch with John Kaiser will be back right after the break. I'm Larry Ray, President and CEO of American Manganese, Inc., listed on the TSX Venture, ticker symbol AMY, A-M-Y, with proprietary patents in the U.S., China, and South Africa. Our focus is on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. China recently legislated the responsibility for recycling onto their electric vehicle manufacturers and importers. For more information, please visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. Gem International is a new diamond explorer in the richest diamond producing country in Africa. Located next to the fourth largest producing diamond mine in the world. International Spotlight is on an 1109 carat diamond recently discovered in Africa by a fellow Canadian junior with a proven operator and finance team. Gem International trades on the TSX Venture Exchange. Symbol GI. Visit us at gemdiamondmining.com. Welcome back. We're chatting with John Kaiser. John, has Rainy Mountain Royalty Corp started drilling yet? Yeah, Rainy Mountain Royalty Corp uh, was also one of the uh, companies presenting uh, at the uh, at the Metals Investor Forum. Uh, several weeks ago, they put out an announcement that they had reached a memorandum of understanding with the Metagamy First Nations on how the exploration on the Brunswick project uh, can proceed. Now, uh, the, the news release said all this stuff, uh, okay, we are going to uh, cooperate, we are going to uh, hire 
uh, First Nations workers for the various jobs are also going to purchase services that the First Nations have. And this is sort of the, 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 the new regime in places where First Nations have jurisdiction over the local exploration uh, activities. And, and, and it's kind of a win-win to get the, uh, the, the First Nations group on site. Otherwise, they can decide that uh, you're, 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 you're disturbing something uh, and, uh, and basically blockade exploration activity. So this was an important milestone for the company. And although the news release was full of all this, uh, you know, spirit of cooperation and respect and language like that, the, uh, the TSX Venture Stock Exchange, when it published its uh, uh, approval of this transaction, it was quite blunt. It didn't refer to any of these things. It just referred to the fact that Rainy Mountain will issue 50,000 shares to the Motogamy First Nations Band. So I guess at the end of the day, uh, it's good that the First Nations have a piece of the action. They benefit from uh, any success that's going on. It isn't just uh, doling out uh, some some cash and, and so on. It's actually making them participants. It's not a huge amount, but at least it's a good sign that uh, – uh, everybody's on side uh, to make a discovery. Now, drilling has started a 15-hole drill program, and uh, they're targeting IP targets, which are estimated at a depth of about uh, 100 meters. Uh, the, all, the, all the sort of sampling they've done at surface, it doesn't get really any meaningful gold values, but they get arsenic values, which are tend to uh, disseminate farther from the main zone than gold does. Uh, they've also got antimony in the system. Uh, they've done trenching on the property, which uh, exposes the sort of uh, structural setting that is conducive for forming deposits. But the big question here is, uh, yeah, you probably do have a sulfide system there, but is it enriched in gold? So this is a very important drill program. That will take us probably four to six weeks to find out, uh, because usually you can't tell in these sulfide systems whether it were uh, you know, whether there's any gold in it until we get assays. So drilling underway, Bob Middleton is very excited. Uh, the stock has not really moved from that 10 cents financing uh, uh, rights offering that was done a while back. Uh, so again, we're, this is the kind of play that could come to life if you get a discovery hole that says game on and make it become like a discovery delineation play in the style of Camino Minerals. Alto Ventures just announced the sale of its Windfall East project, and the stock has been hit by selling. Did they give something big away? Well, you would think the stock that was at eleven twelve cents on again, Alto Ventures also uh, presented at the uh, Metals Investor Forum. You you, you, you would think the market uh, would be uh, uh, has suddenly lost its its flagship project down fifty percent. The Windfall East project, which they used to call Alcudia, um, is in the Windfall District. It's east of the um, uh, uh, Windfall deposit of uh, where, where Cisco Mining has uh, managed to achieve an $800 million market cap, uh, uh, raised uh, $80 million in February. In fact, it was during February when the market was waking up to the rethink of the Windfall District. Uh, that uh, Bowfield came to life and managed to attract eight ten million dollars financing, and uh, everybody started looking at who's got claims in this area. And uh, right around that time, you know, uh, Alto was sort of trading six to eight cents. It was still kind of sorting out uh, the bad news on its uh, Geffa Diamond project in northern northern Saskatchewan, and the stock ran to twelve thirteen cents on volume. And when I checked the stockhouse uh, bull boards. Uh, yeah, sure enough, there were pumpers there saying, yes, you should buy Alto and all this kind of stuff. So I think what happened was probably Quebec-based investors uh, familiar with this Alcudia project uh, uh, bought up the stock, uh, figuring that this is a big emerging area play, and uh, ran it up. And, uh, and of course, it, it is becoming a big area play. And the link zone, which is fairly close to the Windfall East project, uh, it's been delivering pretty pretty good grades, and uh, of late there has been some hope that, oh, well, if this system dips far enough, it could extend onto the Windfall East project of, uh, of Alto. And, uh, you know, Alto had drilled the southeastern part of that property in the past and not come up with anything impressive. But the northwestern part uh, 
was very swampy, and so they didn't really, uh, uh, they never did any work there. So there was hope that in the northwestern part there was still something there. Um, but they, they did a deal where they effectively sold the project for, to uh, Bowfield Minerals for uh, $300,000 cash, uh, a financing of $350,000, uh, which Bowfield will take down and just under 3 million shares of Bowfield, which will be restricted for a year. And then they get a 1% NSR, of which half can be bought for a million, leaving them with an uncapped half percent NSR for a project that probably is a long shot. And for Bowfield, it's great to acquire this loose, this loose piece because it has some strategic ground. It's a target for a Cisco to eventually absorb. They're already a big shareholder. So Bowfield has done a kind of a cleanup operation of this loose end within the uh, Osisco land package. Uh, uh, Alto ends up with $650,000 immediately. If Bowfield ends up uh, significantly higher than the 22, 3 cents it's at now, could be another million, two million bucks in the treasury. So Alto's now set to do all the work it wants to do on the Oxford Lake uh, Banded Iron Formation Gold Project in, in Manitoba and set the stage for a serious drill program in January 2018 uh, when they'll have all the data and the ground will be frozen so that they can move the rigs wherever they want. So it's actually good news that they sold this project because now they don't have to dilute with more financing at the current price to fund their ongoing operations. Coming up, John Kaiser's closing comments. Lotus Ventures Inc. is a BC-based medical marijuana company poised to launch into the rapidly evolving cannabis sector. Lotus is in the final review stage of the Health Canada approvals to become a licensed producer, having arranged facility financing of up to $12 million, plus building permits for its prototype indoor production facility. Shares trade under the symbol J on the Canadian Securities Exchange. Visit our website at lotusventures.ca. I'm Douglas Mason, President and CEO of Rainy Mountain Royalty Corp., RMO on the TSX Venture Exchange. Rainy Mountain's Brunswick property is located in the Rideout Shear Zone in Ontario. With grab samples running as high as 32 grams per ton gold, a drill program will commence this spring to test the numerous targets located by recent groundwork. For more information, visit our website, rmroyalty.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with John Kaiser. John, Arizona Silver closed above a dollar on Friday, May 26th. Do we have a discovery yet? Well, I've been looking for a news release, and I have not seen one. Uh, Mike Stark, uh, the chairman of the company, has said uh, uh, once, once we have a news release, we will, we will put it out. Uh, he was hoping he wouldn't get it on Friday because oh, you, apparently you only put out bad news on Friday. Um, if we uh, had bad news and they had the assays, we would have seen that. Uh, so they could put it out on Monday if they do have the assays. But Monday is the American Memorial Day holiday, so you would have a you know substantial part of the audience uh, uh, celebrating uh, a holiday and not being able to trade. And kind of interestingly, uh, this was what happened uh, way back uh, in 2009 when uh, Jim Dines declared that he was the original rare earth bug, and he did that on the Sunday before Memorial Day. So all the Canadians uh, front ran on Monday, front ran this, uh, with all, the, all the rare earth stocks that he mentioned, created the uptrend that appealed to everybody, and we had the, the, the stock uh, uh, then take off on Tuesday with the buying coming in. So I don't know if the company's doing anything, finding anything like that, if they don't have assays, it's probably Tuesday before we have assays. But I'm definitely going to be talking about uh, Arizona Silver Exploration at Corp at the uh, Cambridge Newsletter Writers Conference, which happens this weekend, Sunday and Monday in Vancouver. Um, I will be on a panel at 9 o'clock in the morning on Sunday uh, where Rick Rule will grill us on what our top pick is. And... Uh, uh, um, last I looked, uh, Arizona Silver was on the exhibitor list for the Cambridge Conference. And on Monday at 11.40, uh, I will be doing a presentation on visualizing outcomes where I uh, use Arizona Silver and its Ramsey project uh, 
in, in Arizona as an example of how do you think about a junior where you have a blind target and you just have some circumstantial evidence as to what it might be. How do you visualize that? How do you put a price on it? And then, of course, uh, uh, I might be scrambling Monday morning when, uh, when the results come out and they're perhaps very different than what I am hoping for. But in any case, uh, I'll be showing people how to look at these discovery expiration play and make a bet that uh, makes you completely understand why you win or lose depending on what the results are. John, have a good time at the conference. I hope to have a good time. Uh, thank you, Jim. We've been talking with John Kaiser, his website, kaiserresearch.com. Discovery Watch will be back next week. I'm Jim Goddard. Comments made on Discovery Watch are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any manner whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Archived online at HowStreet.com. Discovery Watch is a production of How Street Media Incorporated.